We're talking on worship before our, our anniversary, and I feel I need to complete it. I need to count on you. The Lord say, uh, maybe I'm going to conclude today or, no, or, or not. I don't know. But let me finish here some 20 book of Exodus. Exodus 20, 23. We're going to be looking from 24 to 25. Exodus 23. We'll be looking at 24 to 25. God is unhappy when we worship created things rather than the creature. Amen. He sternly warned Israel to worship him. I want to read the Bible. Say, shall we read? You must not bow down to their gods or worship them. Do not imitate their practices. Instead, demolish them, smash their sacred pillars to pieces. Then verse 25, it says, worship the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take away your Innocent. Somebody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. That sounds too weak. It should be more stronger than this. Amen. Somebody. <laughs> Thank you, Bro Tyron. Amen. <laughs> when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, and um, the Lord warned them, sternly warned them. He says, um, Where you are going, do have something that they worship. He said, please, when you get in there, you must not worship what they worship. Now, what does that imply? It implies that even unbelievers, people that do not worship the living God, have what they worship. Everybody, every man, every woman have what they worship. So you cannot afford to be a lackluster worshiper. You cannot avoid to take your Christian faith, you know, with levity or with nonchalant attitude. Because even the unbelievers, God knew they were worshiping something. So he advised Israelites, I'm taking you to that nation. I have prepared that land for you. But please, there is only one thing that will take you away from that land, that will take you away from my presence, or that will hinder you from receiving what I have ordained for you. He said, the only thing is to worship what is not God. So when I read this scripture, I discover that everybody worships something. Everybody, whether small and big, even those who call themselves et etished or, or etished, whatever they call themselves, amen, they worship something. Some of them worship their what? Their intelligence. Hello. What makes you not to worship God is actually what you worship. If there is any reason for you not to worship God, that reason is the reason you don't worship God, and that is what you worship. So everyone worships something, but when you risk your life, worship what is not God, you will certainly pay, whether you are a believer or not. And today, many Christians are actually worshiping something. Some of you worship your clothes. If you don't have good clothes, you will never be in the church. A lot somebody. I know of one person who told me his problem of not going to church is clothes. I said, but what are you wearing? You know, somebody. <laughs> Some people worship their jewelries. If they don't have, if they don't paint, they will not be in church. And then, fortunately for us, when we came out from the womb, we didn't come with jewelries. Hello. In fact, God is so kind, he didn't even put clothes on our body. You came naked. Oh, you're not even talking to me right now. <laughs> you know, the Bible said naked they came. So cloth is actually an addition to who you are. What makes you is not your cloth. So if you worship your cloth or worship your job, there was a certain man in my community when I was at home, at home and we were talking, I was talking with one young man. He said, he said this man said what he worshiped is his wife. He said, since he got married to his wife, his head is no longer there. <laughs> but I've been thinking, what is that woman doing for that man? <laughs> there are people, what they do, they worship their wife. Once their wife says, no church, no church. Their wife says, no activity. Once their wife has said it, it's the same, no, no, my family. I love family. My, I love my kids dearly, just like I love the, our congregation. But you know what? 
if I don't know how to bow to God, I will not be able to bow. If I don't know how to bow to God, I can't be able to love them. What makes me to love them is because I love him. And so many people, if their children have a little sickness, they will abandon anything. A lot, a lot of time, I and my wife come to this church with our chicky sick. I lost somebody. I've never stopped being in church, and not because I'm a pastor. Even, even when I came to this country, I didn't start pastoring immediately, even though I was a pastor before I came. Hello. I was assisting another pastor. But I've never stopped church one day because my kids were sick. Never. Hello. You've got to choose what do you worship. I am talking this morning, somebody. So once you worship that thing in the land, rather than God, you will end up losing the land that was meant to have your name in it. So many people worship their job. Hello? There are people, they, don't, they work on Sunday because of situation, but there are people, they ask for Sunday job. Because once, you know, the devil makes Sunday. How is it that the devil makes it in such a way if you work on Sunday, you're being paid more? Hello, somebody? Because the, the enemy knows how to keep you away. Now, so stop worshiping creator things. You've got to worship creator. If you look at the book of Romans 1, Romans 1, reading from possibly 25 to 26, I'm going to show you something. Hello, if you, uh, it says, they exchange the truth of God for a lie. Watch this. And they worship and save something created instead of the creature who is blessed forever. Amen. So many people worship and save what was created rather than the creature. And, and, and you know, one, man, one guy, one man from uh, uh, Russia, he said that once you begin to bow down to what is created, you will become like what you worship. Now, that is, this, this, this is one of the reasons if, if you have people that bow down to wood, to tree, to animals, to car, they reduce themselves to like what they worship or to what they worship. Hello, somebody. So many of you today, I'm telling you, you worship money. Hello. How, come, how can you come to a level in your life where money saves you? You no longer save money. Hello. You no longer save clothes. You no longer save any other distraction but God. Do you know why people do not give in the house of God? Hello, folks. Are we here? You know why? Because their life revolves around money. Once your life revolves around money, you find it difficult to, have, to, to save, you know, to give money. I know about a few people in this church, money saves them. They don't save money. I know their life. They don't value money. And once you value money, it is difficult to make money. Even if you make money, that money is going to put on wings and flies away. From year to year, you will remain a boy. It's not that you're not working hard. You work very hard, but you, you save little. The reason is because money knows that you love, you, you love it. And remember, money has no character. Money put on the character of the hoarder. You lost somebody? Of the person that manages the money. If you're a giver, your money gives. You've got to come to a point in your life where you give. You give out everything. In, in worship, you don't reserve anything. In worship, you give all. Until you come to such a, a place or to such a, to, to, to a place in your life where everything becomes not in what place. I used to say to people, if money is the thing that brings ministers down, I will not fall. Hello, I say it with alacrity, though with a little bit conservative, a bit conservative here, so that I will not look arrogant. But I'm saying, if money is the thing that pushes ministers down, I will not fall. Because you've got to know who you are. If you put it on my legs, on my foot, I'm going to kick it out. Because it's not going to pull me. It's not going to, I don't even recognize rich man's table. Hello, somebody. Hello. I don't recognize rich man's table. I don't ask people money. Even when I have problem. Because I don't want to reduce my sermon to anybody's dictation. So you've got to come to a point where everything around you begins to serve you. You are not serving those things. You will have freedom. 
you will have a new life. You will have a good life. When money, you no longer worry. No money, no money. I told my wife, say, the anniversary was coming. She said she want to do something, and there is no money. And I said, when that day come, money will come. Don't worry. She said, don't worry yourself. She said, she, oh, she will not do what she needed to do. I said, just prepare what you need today. Before the anniversary, money will come. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. And God did it. So once you live your life in that way, don't even carry certain problems you cannot save. I've not got into the sermon proper, but it's, sometimes it's good to talk, right? <laughs> don't even carry certain problems you can't solve. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. Don't put yourself in certain debt because of anybody. Hello? Do what you can do and do, forget the things you cannot do. God is, is going to take charge of things as time goes on. Hello, somebody? I'm going to give a certain testimony, but at the right time, what God did for me, even in this time of crisis, Hello? You've got to understand that God needs you. Everything about you, everything in you should be a way of worship. In the book of Romans chapter 12, reading from 1, shall we look at that scripture? The Bible says what? Offer your body as what? As living, as a living sacrifice. Therefore, brothers, shall we read together? By the message of God, I urge you, I urge you, <laughs> present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy one, and pleasing to God, this is your spiritual worship. Hello? So how do you offer your body as a living sacrifice? Is it coming to the altar and just presenting yourself and say, Lord, this is my body? It has nothing to do with your physics. It has, anything to, has everything to do with your spirit, with your heart, with the way you manage your life. How do you manage your finances, your relationship, your heart? Offer your body as a living sacrifice. So the only way you can worship God, don't tell me that you are a worshiper when you can't give to God. Don't tell me that you are a worshiper when you can't commit in any part. There may be reasons why people don't commit to things in the kingdom. Maybe they are tied up with something. They are waiting for a season, a particular season. But don't wait too long. Hello? So how do you offer your body? Therefore, the brothers, by the message of God, I urge you, I urge you to present your bodies. Hello? Do you have many bodies? Hello? Do you have many bodies? Hello, somebody reply to me if you're here. Do you have many bodies? You have one body. We can take up many body parts, but you don't have many bodies. So this scripture has nothing to do with your physical bodies because it's not talking, with your, it's not talking about your physical or your physical bodies. It's to present your bodies. So it has to do with what you do, how you live your life, how you give to the kingdom, how you give to your fellow human beings. So when you present your life to God in such a way, you are actually serving God. You are actually worshiping God. Tell us somebody. So you've got to understand that you can actually serve God in a, you know, in, in, in a very little way. That's a, you know, just a little things you do for people. Yesterday I went to somewhere. When I got there, there was a lot of chairs there. I could have just gone and sat in any, in any, of, the, any of those chairs. But I was just at the back. I was still standing. So one of our brothers was there. He went and brought me a chair. And I really appreciated it. I could have just gone. He went and brought me a chair. I said, bro, I said for me, I said, I said, oh, thank you, thank you. When I came home, then I said to my family, I said, I went say, to a place today. A certain brother saw me, and he went and brought chair. I could have gone, brought a special, it's the same chair, but he went and brought it and put for me. I, for me, I could have said, I'm not saying I'm looking for, you know, because some of you can get it wrong. But what I'm saying, I feel so blessed for that little thing that brother did for me. That is how you, work, how you serve God. That is how you worship God. Do I have to come home and say it to my family? It's not, I couldn't, but I say, I have to tell them. Because what, it touched my heart. So how do you offer your body? How do you worship God? So you're waiting, oh, until I have time to go to church, then I will worship him. You can worship God even at your workplace. Because you fear God. He said, Lord, I've offered my body. I can't do this. Hello, somebody. So you've got to understand that a true child of God imbibes the attitude of worship always. Because worship is the key to receiving anything from God. Zechariah chapter 14. Please read from 14. Zechariah 14. 
We're going to read from 16 to 18. <coughs> Say to your neighbor, worship is the key to receiving anything. Please be a talking Christian now. Because you, you talk at home. You talk at home. Say worship is the key to receiving anything. I mean, anything is worth anything. So many people are living in a drought land, a dry land, because they don't know how to worship. There is nothing you cannot obtain from God in the place of worship. I'm telling you. You see, the Bible said, then, shall we read the scripture? Then all the survivors from the nation that came against Jerusalem, we go up, go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts. And to celebrate the festival of boats. Keep going. My emphasis is here. He said, should any of the families of the earth not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king? The Lord of hosts. Rain will not fall on them. Keep going. He said, and if the people of Egypt will not go up and, and enter, then rain will not fall on them. Now, when I was reading this, this scripture, and I look at commentary, and the, this, the, the writer was talking about when Israel was, you know, Take him to Ezra, and there are some people humiliated in Israel as a nation. And God began to deal with the nations. And when he finally restored Israel, he said that not only will Israel be restored, but as many that humiliated Israel will come back to Jerusalem to worship. And if any of them refuse to go back to, to go to Jerusalem to worship, he said, all the nations, if they refuse to go to Jerusalem to worship, rain will not fall for them. But the key word there is rain. It means when I worship, rain actually falls for me. Hello, somebody. One of the reasons you see certain people that are not doing so much, but they are prospering, is because they know how to worship. Hello? They know how to call on God. <clears throat> there are certain people, they are, they are broken sinners. Oh, you're not talking to me right now. <laughs> Have you seen broken sinners? Do you know what I mean by broken sinners? These are men that know they are sinful, but yet they are broken. They are dealing with sinful issues they are not in control of. They've been trying to deal with it, and yet they can't overcome. But yet they still know how to drag themselves to the altar, and then they worship. And you know what they did, yet they are prospering. And you're wondering, God, why can't you prosper, prosper me, but you're prospering Barnabas? Because I know how Barnabas lives his life. But what you did not know, you did not know when Barnabas is by the, behind his bed and crying to God and say, Father, you know, I did it, but remember, I am here in the presence of you. You saw what Barnabas did, but you did not know when Barnabas was worshiping God. He is a broken sinner. Such people, I call them broken sinners. Never you dare put down a broken sinner. Or you're not even talking to me. Because a broken sinner knows how to break down before the presence of God. And so, God, and that's such a person, he may be worshiping, sinning, but yet rain is falling for him or for her. And he, you want, Lord, why is he not living in a drought land? He should be experiencing drought. Why not? Why, Lord? But the reason is because he still worship. Even God said to you, this verse, say, if Egypt do not go to worship God in Jerusalem, rain will not fall for her. Egypt represents Gentile. Egypt represents sinners. But if, if, the, the Lord said, if Egypt can worship, that their, her situation is going to change. Said to your neighbor, do you want a change in your life? You've got to learn to worship. So worship is the only way to get to God. Worship will put food on your table. Hello? Worship will bring you closer to God. Worship will remove the veils of sin and the mask of sin. <clears throat> Once you know how to worship, I'm telling you, your problem is closer solved. In the name of Jesus. Even in the Bible time, if you look at the book of Mark, Read from 6 and then read from 12 to 13. You will discover when, when Jesus saw that man that was possessed. You all know the story, right? When he saw that man and, and wanted to catch that demon out from the man, this man being in the tomb, he's been tormented all his life, 
But then Jesus wanted to cast out the demon. And the demon said, the Bible says in verse 6, so they went out and preached. No, 5, 5 verse 6. It said it should be 5 verses, my 5 verses. The demon saw Jesus and he bowed. When he saw Jesus from distance, he ran and laid down before him. Even demons know how to worship God. You're not even talking to me right now. I, I even saw that in the book of James, I think James 2, 19. It says, if the demon tremble, what, what about you? So the demon saw Jesus and bowed. He didn't just kneel down for nothing. He bowed in worship. He said, yes, I know you are the king of king. He said, please, I know I'm a demon, but don't cast me out to the arid land and and don't cast me out to the wilderness. If you can do this for me, Jesus, I will appreciate it. Now, in verse 12 and 13, we discover that Jesus Christ granted, hello, the prayer of, or the request of this demon. And I said, Lord, why? And the Lord, when I, I read the scripture months ago, took me to verse 6. He said, because this demon knows how to worship. Hello. The Bible says, can you believe that God is one? You do well. Praise God for you. Praise God for believing that God is one. Praise God for coming to church. We thank you for giving to the house of God. We thank you for looking well and dressing well and singing well in the church. He said, but, watch this, Jim said, but the demons also believe. They do not only believe, but they show us. Oh, you're not talking to me right now. I, I thought I'm talking to some people. I feel it. I don't know if you feel it with me, somebody. So even the demon believe, hello, that God is one. He does not only believe, but he shakes when he thinks of the unity of God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. So if your worship it's just worshiping without even trembling before God. It means the demons are in a higher dimension of understanding of worship than you do. Oh, you're not talking to me, somebody. I'm looking for the right somebody. I'm looking for the right congregation this morning. If the demon can worship and, you know, believe in God, believe that God is one. The demon believes that God is one even though he doesn't want to submit to God. You must do much more. So Jesus granted the prayer. I haven't heard anybody say this in my lifetime. I haven't heard anyone. But God just showed me that this, the prayer or the request of this demon was granted because of verse 6. In Mark chapter 5, 6. The demon knelt before Jesus and said, Jesus, please don't cast me out. How can demon ask Jesus not to cast him out? To the arid place, to the wilderness. And Jesus granted it. Because Jesus' desire was to cast the demon to, the, to a dry places. But the demon knelt in worship. And said, please don't, Lord. He said, I want you to cast me out to the car, to the ram, and to the bull. Closed to the city. And Jesus granted his request. But thank God for that car. What, what, is it a car or a donkey? Why did Jesus catch that demon to you? Or oh, the pig? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Ruth. My teacher. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Watch the demon. The, 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 the pig said, um, Demon, I can't let you leave my body. <laughs> Hello, somebody. And the pig ran into the sea. Say, Instead of you to leave me, I better run into the sea. But human beings, we allow certain things to live in our body. We don't ride violently and fight certain things in our life. We are comfortable Hello, somebody, with that little thing that is going on in our life. And you're saying, Lord, I've tried. It's not working. You can try more. Say to your neighbor, you can try more. You can try more. You have not tried in such a way to give your life. You know, you have not tried battle with certain things to the extent of losing your life. So you still have opportunity to battle. You can battle certain things, fight certain things. How can an ordinary pig refuse to allow demon, you know, indwell it? And you are allowing, allowing certain things to reign over your life and your family. 
He loves somebody. It's one of the reasons you've got to be angry with certain sickness and certain disease. <laughs> Many times, when, once my children complain they are sick, I don't quickly, let's go to the doctor. The first thing I do, I pray. Last Friday, my daughter was singing here, and she came to me in the office. She said, Dad, they were still singing. Say, my hand, I don't know why my hand started penning me. The first thing I, I, I said, I, will, I always say, Bill, have you prayed? Then I quickly, I said, okay, bring your hand. That's what I normally do. I pray. After praying for her, then I came back to, the, to here to talk to the worship team. My daughter said, Dad, you know when you were praying for me, my hand was started vibrating. The pain is gone. But she didn't tell me when I was in the office. Because sometimes when you pray for Viola, immediately say in Jesus' name, that Viola said, Dad, the pain is still there. <laughs> I said, Viola, just have faith. I just prayed for you now. You're just waiting for me to say in Jesus' name. <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're telling me the pain is still there. Tell us somebody. But your duty, by the way, is to pray. And never let anybody make you feel as if your prayer doesn't work. If your prayer didn't work for him, it worked for another person. So you're not nobody's mama. Or you're not talking to me, somebody. So your duty is to do what? Pray. So you've got to understand that once you worship, do we know, please take me to, to Mark, still Mark, I'm going to show you something, Mark 22 to 24. Mark 22 to 24. The, the book of Mark, Mark 5, 22 to 24, tells us of a certain man called Jairus. Hello? Hello, somebody. The Bible says one of the synagogue leaders named Jairus came, and when, uh, and when he saw Jesus, what did he do? He fell at his feet. You know, falling at your feet represents an act of what worship. Hello, somebody. The other day when John Ali was here, I was just talking to him. Quickly, I feel I don't, I don't need to just sit and talk to him. I just went to my knee in the office. And I hold him on his feet. And I would say, so, do you, do you want to do this? Do you want to do it? And I did it purposely. There are certain men you don't stand to talk to. You learn to kneel because you know what you're looking for. Am I taking this, somebody? And so when Jairus saw Jesus, he knelt at his feet. And then the Holy Ghost, no, keep, okay, keep going, keep going. <clears throat> okay, and kept begging. Watch this. While he was on his feet, and he kept begging him, my little daughter is a dead Though, come and lay your hand on her so she can get well and leave. What is he was on his you know, nail, right? Begging. He knelt down and he was begging Jesus. There are times when you're praying and the Holy Ghost said, Kneel. Just go on your knee. You don't feel to stand, you know? Sometimes people may be praying for you and the Holy Ghost said, Just kneel. Sometimes worship is going on and something is telling you, don't stand and worship. I don't mean you can stand and connect to God. You can kneel and connect to God. You can open your eye and connect to God. Even sometimes, you know, when we pray, we say to people, close your eyes. The Bible, I didn't actually, the Bible, nowhere in the Bible, the Bible says, close your eyes. Hello, somebody. It's actually a religious thing. You know, we do it because we don't want people to be what? To be distracted. But you can still open your eyes and receive miracle. You're not even talking to me right now. Just may I say, anytime they are praying, the husband, you know, is looking from the window and looking at the green grass and just looking around and they are still praying and she will be getting angry. And said, you know, I've forgotten his name. I said, why don't you pray? The man said, but I'm praying. He said, but you're looking around. He said, but I'm praying. He said, many years, and the Lord taught him, say, the husband appreciates God by looking at the grass <laughs> and looking at the flowers. <laughs> and when, she, when he sees things like that, he worships God by seeing the beauty of creation. But there are times when you don't even want to look up. You can't even look up in a, in a, in a, in a, a certain time of worship. You just want to bow. You don't want to open your eyes. You don't want any distraction. 
because you are in the presence of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You are in the presence of His Majesty. And when you are in the presence of His Majesty, you, you dare not be distracted because you know that something is coming on your way. <clears throat> majesty. Uh, the other day when we were... Uh, a sister just told me this morning that on Saturday, while we were the worshippers we were worshipping, she quickly, she was standing and the Lord opened her eyes and she saw like a roll of clothes, white clothes. And it was rolled down from heaven and it was rolled all the way to the altar to where John Ali was sitting. Hello, somebody. It was rolled down all the way, a white cloth. Like, you know, when you have a cloth, in a, something like a, a cloth you've not sewn, you know, I don't know what they call it, in a material, you know, and it was rolling a white, yeah, and it was, it, she saw it rolling down from heaven and then rolled down to the altar. When I saw this like that, what I do, I bow. I just know God is here. And sometimes when you're praying or worshiping, you probably can notice a hand on your, on your head or you notice a drizzling, a, a rain falling on you or you can sense that the atmosphere has changed. At that moment, you know that it just don't make noise. Something is about to happen. You just key into it. One day we were there in that building. <coughs> Sorry, one way we were there praying. We were having night with you. I was talking and I was talking to the after we were about to close. While I was talking, immediately it's like Shaikina glory came down. I was still telling them we're telling them what, what next the, the, the vigil is almost over. And the Shaikina glory came down. I quickly say to everybody, I think Sister Ruth was there. I said, no, wait, 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 wait. So when I say that, I said, take the power. Immediately the power of God came on everybody. Hello? I was sensitive in my in the spirit. And when that Yakri, his glory, walked in, I knew that the glory of God came down. Now, you've got to be sensitive in the place of worship. If, if, even God will be sensitive when you're dealing with certain men, because there are men that are not your mate, or you're not talking to me. Don't say there are men, there are men that are not your mate. When I saw certain men of God, I don't, I, I, oh, I said to somebody, I said, why do people run after politicians? I respect politicians because God put them there, don't misunderstand me. But when I see politicians, I don't go wanting to shake them. What am I going to get from shaking the politician? You don't, you're not talking, think, think like me right now. So what am I going to get by standing on the line wanting to shake a politician? You've got to shake men of God. When you shake them, something happens in your life. I said to somebody, I don't understand why people line up to shake politicians to shake their hands. Shake what? I know, respect them, honor them. But the only person that moved me, the only people, when I see them, I go in awe. Amen? Is when I see men that have been there fighting, cultivating in the kingdom. You know, you know, dealing with God. Men that ha 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 has encountered angels of God. When I see them, I desire to get close to them. Because I know they have encountered men. And they have encountered God. And there is something that can flow from their life into my own spirit. Oh, Taba. Many years ago, when I, I didn't know I was going to be a pastor. So after, God blessed me. I was still in my 20s. And bless me, not in Africa at that time, but now things is changing. If you have car, it's not a luxury. <coughs> I have car among this leadership. I'm the one that have car there. I was not in a leadership. I was just a member. But I never leave. After the church is over, I don't know I was going to be a minister. After the church is over, I will be there waiting for them. I will be there. Even if they close by, they, they will be almost every Sunday they have meeting. And I will, I will never go. I will be waiting. And I will be following them, walking around with them. I don't know why I was doing those things. But I, I, it, it is not alone that I was actually learning something. One day, so while I was following them, I had all the pains. They were going through all the, when they were discussing, I know I listened. And some, one day, they were in one of the room of one of the leader. They, they were in the leader's house, and I was there with them. I wasn't the leader. And they were discussing of what they were going through in the church. I just lie on the floor. I was crying. <laughs> they were discussing, but I was crying. <laughs> How many of you now? Many of you now don't cry. You're too sophisticated to cry. I lost somebody. But God knows I'm not making it up. I was on the floor. They were discussing all their pain and, I and all that was going on in the church and the challenges. I lie on the floor. I started crying loud. I was just crying. I was crying for them as if they were dead already, but they were still alive. I lost somebody. I followed these guys, followed them all the way until one of them, and the Holy Ghost said to me, You've got to join the prayer team. So I, 
See, I was planning that, oh, one day I'm going to go and join the prayer team. I'm feeling that God has come into prayer. But I didn't know that God had ministered to one of that, of the leader of the prayer team. He's also the leader, the core group. He, the God, God had ministered to him to invite me to come and be part of the prayer ministry. So when he told me, see, actually, the Lord has told me, amen, and this guy trained me, he taught me how to pray. I followed the leaders, and all of them now are senior pastors, amen. I didn't know I was following greatness. I didn't know I was following calling. I didn't know I was following ministry. Sometimes, sometimes when people do stuff for me, and I do things also, I have done it for other people. Even when I came to this country, I was already doing crusade. Some of you have seen the videos of things I've done before, before I came to this country. I was already you know, speaking in big meetings and sharing people with some major ministers in my country. Travel at the time and do major programs. But when I came, I still have to save a man of God. My wife is my witness here. I don't leave the church when he's still there. I will be waiting until he's, everybody's gone. I will be there and want to maybe want to say something, maybe want, you know. Um, I just be there. Anytime you want to go, that's when I leave. I don't just leave. I am serving into something. You see, leadership is not what? It's not. In fact, Revelation, for example, is not read. It's caught. You're serving to leadership. You're not ordained into leadership. A lot of people are waiting until they are ordained into something. They say, I'm a leader now. No, I'm a leader. Who, you serve to it. Let people see that you are qualified to be into certain position. Some of you want to hold microphone? You want to hold microphone? Some of you? Hello, you're going to wait for a long time. Hello, somebody. Because it costs a lot to hold this microphone. I'm not being arrogant, but I'm telling you now, if you want to hold it, come and hold it. You're going to pay the price. Hello? It costs so much. You know what I go through? Do you know what I go through? So you've got to understand that it costs a lot to hold microphone. And to get there, you need to save into it. Save into it. Don't wait for greatness. Match into your greatness. Worship yourself. Take place of greatness. Some of you are waiting for... <clears throat> the other day, I was, I've been working with the Miracle World Channel. I've been working, Pastor Steve, I've put in so much. Yesterday, it started from 8 o'clock and left by probably about 11 o'clock or 10. 10. Pastor Louisa, we celebrate you. Oh, I'm just feeling for you guys in the last three months. This man of God, I've spent so much. And yesterday, one person was worried. Oh, he needed to go because the wife is sweating. I said to the person, I said, you know what? To be great, you've got to pay the price. Tell me about it. What have you done for your generation? Somebody made the airplane you are flying. You fly with. Somebody made the clothes you put on right now. Somebody gave you that phone and in your hands. Somebody you know, put hands on your hands. I mean car. The car you drive to the somebody made it. Just to clean the church is a problem. The chair you, you are sitting on right now, somebody made it for you. So another person got to work hard for other people to enjoy. So I'm not so merciful on Pastor Steve right now, this moment. I, am I talking to somebody? Somebody got to do something for another person to enjoy. Because if you look at your life, you find out that you've not actually contributed much. So many people have given you so much. You, when you run to the doctor, do you think that the doctors operate with their you know, bare hands? They don't. They operate with sophisticated medical equipment. How did it come about? Somebody was in the laboratory. Hello, paying so much price. I always say to my wife, anytime she demands time once in a while, she actually allows me to do the ministry as much as I can. And um, especially when you're doing many things, I minister almost three times or more a week. And um, it's hard for, for you to prepare one someone, you know what it takes. Hello, somebody. And I'm writing a book I want to come out before our, our conference. And some, 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 in the last four months, I've never, uh, unless about yesterday or two days ago, hello, two, I've never slept by three. I sleep like four, five, six in the morning. In the last four months, I'm telling you the truth now. How I sleep by three, very hard, unless I don't remember. Because I'm working. I want to invest. I want to contribute to the life of our generation. Hello, do you want to be great? You see great people when you see them, especially men that have changed life. Don't stand to talk to them. Behave like Joshua. You bow before the angel and say, are you for me or against me? Hello? I didn't go far today again. I, maybe I'll share a few of these and I'll, quickly I will close. 
Say, neighbor, are you here? Please talk to your neighbor and say, are you still listening to me? Are you still in the church or, or have you lost it because of time? Because time belongs to God. Say, neighbor, time belongs to God. Oh, it belongs to God. Hallelujah. What there is, see, until you learn to worship in his presence, you cannot escape the pestilence, pain, and the lack that is in this world. Please turn to the book of Revelation. I'm going to be looking at 15 to 17. Some of you, uh, a lot of people, do you know, a lot of people pay so much for insurance. Hello? Uh, those things is good. It's, it's, it's a common wisdom. Hello? But um, Revelation, Revelation chapter, what did I say? <clears throat> Revelation chapter 7. We're going to be looking at them um, probably 13, 15 to 17. 15 to 17. Or oh, let's check a 14, 14. 14 to 17. Did you realize that so many people, <coughs> so many people pay so much for insurance? Most big men, they have not only insured even their chicken, amen, they insure their glass, they insure their cup, because they are afraid that robbers will break in and take their stuff. They live in fear. Hello? The worst thing that will happen to you is you're driving, you're thinking you're going to die. Hello? You're, you're, you're coming to church, you're thinking you may not make it today. You go to bed, you're thinking you're going to die. Most of the celebrities, most of them live in that manner. Every day they are afraid of death. Some of them, I know of a celebrity before you go to sleep, you know, as I read, somebody needs to go to the room and inspect it and make sure that there is no killer in there. <laughs> Hello? Because they don't have God. If you have God, you're, like, you're already a dead man as a, God, a godly person. You know, you died in Christ and you resurrected with Christ. So if you're, if you're dead already, when somebody wants to kill you, you don't want to kill a dead man because he's already, the man is already dead. You cannot kill a man that is already dead. We died in Christ and we resurrected with him. I'm not afraid somebody's going to do charm me or give me poison. You want to give a dead man poison? You lost somebody? Died in Christ and resurrected with him. So before you must give me poison, you must give poison to Christ. If your poison will kill Christ, then it's going to kill me. Hello, somebody. So if you're looking at this scripture, I saw a certain scripture when John was conversing with the angel. He said, I said to him, sir, you know. Then he told me, I said to him, sir, you know. Then he told me, is this 14? Right? Then he told me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. You are the one that washed your robe. Amen? You are the one that must strive to live holy, must try to live a righteous life. This was, the, you know, the angel of God was talking with John in Island of Patmos, and they were discussing on them. Um, John saw people that were, that were going through tri tribulation. So he asked the angel, say, who are these guys that look haggard and painful and going through a lot? God, John, uh, the angel said to him, these are the guys that have come out from the tribulation, amen, of the beast. So for this reason, they are before the throne, watch, watch this, of God. What is, they came out from tribulation, so because of what they have gone through, they are what? Before the throne of God, and they, will, uh, and they serve him day and night in his what? Sanctuary. Amen. The one seated on the throne will shatter them. When you are worshiping the Lord, the Lord says to me, when you are worshiping the Lord day and night, the Lord now becomes your shatter. Hello, somebody. This is true. The Lord becomes your shatter. Some of you that are coming from third world that understand the manipulations of witchcraft, you will know what I'm talking about. I, I, one of our brothers was sharing with me this, uh, that many years ago, he used to uh, say, Hawk, you know, he, he has something he said, so he hawk around. But anytime he, get, he, he gets to a certain village, he will stay in a certain you know, junction and pray. And that, but he realized he was no longer selling. Anytime he go to that certain village, he will not sell. But all of his men, they will all say their stuff, but he, him was not able to sell. So but one day he, he got to that place again, and the one old woman, she was a witchcraft, she, walked, she, she, she came to that junction and said to her, I want you not to be coming to this village. And the guy said, what should I do? He said, stop coming here. You are not selling, are you? 
The reason is because we are stopping you. You always come in here. Whenever you come here, you pray. The lady said to her, every night, this is where we fly from. Some of you in the Western world here, you don't believe this stuff. You think it's me, but it's real. Hello, I saw a guy in the newspaper the other day in my country. The guy fell uh, you know, in the sea or river, and pressmen went and take him. He said he was flying to London. He was flying on a plantain leave, but his jet crashed, and he fell in that in river. Hello, somebody. He was going to London to have meeting and to watch football match. A human flying. You think it's not real. So, what was my story again before I got here? Praise God, somebody. <laughs> Let me know if you're listening. <laughs> did, you, did you know what I was talking about? You didn't get it. <laughs> okay, I was talking of our brother. Now, when he got to that, jun- that junction, probably wanted to, pray, want, 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 wanted to pray again, the lady came out from nowhere and said, you may, you, you, anytime you pray here, you stop us from flying. He said, every night we got us to this junction to fly. He said, because of your prayer, whenever we come here, we no longer, we are not able to fly. He said, stop coming to this village because you're stopping us from flying. And some of you do not know the, the power of your prayer. Your prayers are contagious. You carry a contagious presence. And that's one of the reasons the enemy have not taken you out. Even though the enemy have tried many times to take you out, to shame you, to demote you, and to retire you. But you keep on going because of your prayers and worship. So, when you worship, you are actually positioning yourself in the presence of God. This guy that came out, out of tribulation, the Bible said, the one seated in the throne will shatter them. Remember, for this reason, they are before the throne of God and they serve him day and night in his sanctuary. What does he mean by serving God? How were they serving God? They were serving by art of worship. They were not cooking for God. They were not washing plate for him. They were not sewing clothes for him. The service here speaks of what? Worship. And because they were worshiping him day and night, we were told the one seated in the throne will shatter them. It means when you worship now, God becomes your mighty tree. Hello, somebody. And he becomes your gigantic tree. He begins to shatter you. He begins to cover you. Hello, somebody. There's a lady that came to meet me about a month ago. She was in this country. About five years ago, moved to Australia. But I and her used to go to ref, ref, um, to refugee place. She, anytime there's a new batch of refugees come to this country, she will make food for them. She will come in to come and preach. She, you know, I, I will go there with her. She will give them food every Saturday. Some Saturday, not every Saturday. And then I will minister to them. When she came to see me from Australia the other day, I looked at her and said, what happened? She said, I had cancer this year. He said, but the Lord, I, I, I asked many people to pray for me around the world. Immediately she said she had cancer. I said, no, you are too good to have cancer. Some of you are too good to be sick because your life has become a living sacrifice. Hello, somebody. So you cannot die in that sickness. That sickness has no power over you. You cannot die in poverty. You cannot die in confusion. You cannot die in pain. Somebody shout a big amen. Don't be sophisticated. Sometimes you've got to know a place when there's a prophetic utterance and learn to say amen. So we saw that, that lady said, but I had a prophetic word from many people. The Lord promised me that even though you're a cancer patient, but this year he's going to come out of cancer. She said, I got cancer this year, and she was healed. Anyway, when she came here, she was still telling me she wanted to go and cut one, one part of her breast to avoid it coming back. And she came and asked me to pray for her. Now, she had gone to second test and, and told, her, told her that it had shrank. You know, now, <clears throat> a big lump, you know, slowly shrank from nowhere, and they were all surprised. And she came for, for me to pray for her. And after praying for her, two weeks ago, she tested me. She said she had gone to test again, and they said she's totally free from cancer. But I said to her, immediately I saw her, I said, no, you can't be sick because you are too good to be sick. I said, you know, I'm too good to be sick. I'm a child of God. You are, that is why you come to church. 
You don't come to church to play. Because there is the anointing of God in this atmosphere. You don't come to waste your time. The unbelievers bow down to money. They bow down to idols. You bow to your God. And you don't, we don't, we're Christians. We, we don't quickly commit suicide. You know, because we know that if we're in that pit, God from nowhere, we pull us out from that pit wherein there is no water. Yesterday you were in the pit, but today you're no longer there. You have risen because something has happened in your life. And people who know you, they're wondering, I thought that she was gone. But no, you are still alive. I thought that everything has been taken away, but how come she's still smiling? It's because of Jesus. And we sang a song this morning. He is king of glory. He has risen. I love that part. King of glory. He is risen. Because the day he, ro he rose, you actually rose with him. So when they are thinking you're gone from nowhere, you got a new job. No, from nowhere, you got a new house. And somehow you bought your own house. And now they are saying, where is she coming from? What is she serving? Maybe something is working for her. Nothing else is working for you. It's because of your worship. Say so to somebody, I'm a worshiper. I worship at all time. I worship in season and out of season. I'm done with this scripture. Please keep going. I'm going to show you. The, the Bible says, this, because they worship, now the Lord becomes a shelter before them and in their midst. And then he says, now because God is their shelter, God is their protector. Because of, or as a reason, because of their worship, or as a reason of their worship, God becomes their shelter. Now, see what happened. Say, no longer with their hunger, no longer with their thirst. No longer will the sun strike them any or any hate. Keep going. Oh, he said, because the lamb who is at the center of it all, the lamb who, because the lamb is at the center of the throne, because the lamb, the lamb who is at the center of the throne will shepherd them. So I realize when you are worshiping, God becomes your center. The center of excellence. He becomes your shelter. He becomes everything. Even when you feel hungry. But you know someday God is going to rescue you. But go back to the, to, to the previous verse. Please let me show you. See, the Bible says, no longer with the hunger. No longer with the thirst. No longer with the sun strike them or any heat. So when we worship God, these things we deal with becomes a thing of the past. Am I talking to somebody? All these things we deal with, I'm telling you, unless you are a worshiper who doesn't have wisdom, because sometimes we worship, but we don't know when the Lord is saying, position yourself. I was spoken in a ministry, a message, I think, positioning for exploit. It's in the internet, in YouTube. You may have to listen to it. You have worshiped so much, but you don't know how to position, not to receive. That's, this, that, that's one of the reasons many Christians are poor. Because we worship so much, but the Lord is saying, say something, do something, and you're there waiting for somebody, God, to throw money from heaven. But I'm telling you, the greatest place, before you ever give insurance your money, you know, for your new car, first insure your car in the presence of God. Bring it to the church and ask a man of God or, or anybody of your church to, de de to dedicate your car for you. Because that new car, the enemy will still take it if you if they want to take it, in, in spite of your insurance. It might be the day the enemy will take that car from you, the day your insurance is inspired, you know, expires. Maybe your insur insurance expires today. You don't even know. You, don't, or you didn't remember to renew, or you don't know that your, the insurance has expired. And the next day, the enemy snatched the car. Hello, and you go to insurance. They say, oh, you didn't, you didn't, you, your insurance expired yesterday. And you're saying, but I've been paying now since for the last 10 years. They say your insurance expired yesterday. You insured it, hello, but it's not insured in heaven. So if you really want to insure your life, insure your children, insure your money, insure your future, insure it before the Lord. When you do it, he becomes a shelter. You, even though you're hungry, don't even feel it. Because you know that God will always make a way. Hello, somebody. If you're here this morning, I want you to have a heart of worship. When you leave this church, say to the Lord, I'm going to give you everything. It doesn't matter what I'm going through, but I will give you my life. 
I will give you my being, I will give you my soul. In fact, when you die, let it be that you die in God. Don't die outside of God. Hello? Die in him. I want to encourage you, church. This morning, I didn't come to excite you. I came to talk to you. I want you to have attitude of worship. I want to encourage you to stop missing that from the church. How come you don't miss that from job? I don't know. Some of you may be working on Sunday because you signed that contract. God is going to give you a new job. But how come you don't miss that from both the parties? Hello, somebody. How come you don't meet that from your mama or your, or your papa party? And you miss it from the party of the father of the you know, king of glory. Every Sunday, as we come to church, we come to party. Don't let your tiredness deceive you on Sundays. And Lord, every Sunday, it's the angel of God comes with a certain package looking for you. And the, every package have your name on it. But if you keep missing, your package might be given to another person. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Take God as something you do. Somebody, Bishop Morton, sang a song and say, worship is what I do. Hello, let worship be what you do. Stop neglecting the things of the Spirit. When you do, you are actually neglecting your destiny. You are neglecting your future. For you to be great, you need to get married to God. Amen? Give him everything. And when you're in love with somebody, you are not, you are not scarce from the presence of that person because you're in love. Say to your neighbor, I'm in love with God. Say, neighbor, I'm in love with God. Say, neighbor, I'm talking to you. I'm in love with God. I don't know about you, but I'm in love with God. Can I have a live it right now? God bless you, church. Glory to God. Can we stand up? I want you to talk to God. In the way you talk to your dad or your mom. Talk to God with your heart. Talk to God with your spirit. Really talk to him this morning. Tell him, come to in a pena ishtana. Tell him that you want to make a, you want to make a commitment. You want to serve him. You truly, truly want to serve him. Hallelujah. Tell him he's holy. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. We declare that he's holy. We declare his name holy. Holy, holy, holy are you.
us his holy. We preach and worship. Give your heart and worship. We preach and worship. Give your heart and worship. Just give your heart and worship. Worship. For the next one minute again, let's give our heart and worship. We preach and worship. Just pray through your worship. Submit your life. Submit your children. Submit your career. Submit your problem. You will not sink in that pit. You will not die of hunger. That sickness will not kill you. sacrifice. I want you to pray with, with your heart. Bless her. Bless your neighbor. 
Ask God to bless him or her. Yes, I wanted to pray that her body, her body will be a living sacrifice. Put the keyboard going. Katamaste. Payeshtani. Kahando. Peheshta. Release blessing. Pray from this day your neighbor will become a living sacrifice. That your bodies will be offered to him as a living sacrifice. Your life is protected. Your family is protected. Your future is protected. Everything about you is protected. In the name of Jesus, I dip you in the blood of Jesus. I dip your children in the blood of Jesus. I dip your calling in the blood of Jesus. Oh, I dip you into the robe, into the blood. May your robe become as white as snow. May your robe become as white as snow. Walk into favor. Walk into grace. Walk into power. In the name of Jesus. I cut down the death of this world. I cut down every arrow that is coming against you. I cut down every habit. Lord, we come against spirit of smoking, spirit of drinking, spirit of violence in this nation. We shatter it. And Lord, we ask you, give this nation grace. Give the church, churches grace. Give our members grace to rise above expectation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Just hold it. Lord, we thank you for this sacred moment, for this sacred hour. We thank you for what you've released. Thank you for healing somebody with pain. Um, if you're here, I don't know if you have pain on your left hand side. Maybe on the west, on your left hand side. Is there anybody with pain on your left and the west? On the, uh, please watch me if you have pain this way, this area here. Right. Just put your hand there, brother. Come. 